This is Ground Affected. My name is Brent and welcome to Auto Supports Failing On You for the 15th time. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I approach supporting models in Lychee for myself to 3D print on my 3D printer. And for this, I'm going to use a model sculpted by Depolar 3D, the Spider Woman. So, I've done this all before in a video before, but I'll go over most of these things again. One of the things about the pro version of Lychee is that you're able to repair models within the slicer itself. Yes, Lychee is a little bit oversensitive when it comes to holes in models, but sometimes you can repair these models within the slicer without having to leave the slicer and use a proprietary program. And luckily for me in this case, Lychee has managed to resolve the problems that it had. And so the next step is going to be to rotate this item and figure out what's going to be the best configuration to print it in. So unfortunately, any part that is facing the build plate, like for example, this bottom of her butt, most of those textures aren't going to be printed amazingly. The next step is going to be hollowing the model. And for this, I'm going to click on the hollow on the left hand side. And in the pro version of Lychee, you have a 3D version of hollowing of which I turned down to two millimeter thickness, click add update and it will hollow the model for you. The next thing for me to do is to just check that there's not going to be any weird pockets where the resin can collect in and not be able to drain out of. I'm then going to click onto the holes and I'm going to start adding drain holes in the model. When I add these holes, I need to make sure that the hole is actually making a hole all the way through into the model. Because if it isn't, unfortunately, it's not going to do what it was designed to do. So I want to add another hole around the bottom here as well. I'll probably add it somewhere around here and somewhere around here just to create a little bit more flow of liquids. Yes, this will make the strength of this part a little bit less. However, I'm going to glue this piece into a leg at the end of the day anyway, and this will be okay for what we're looking for. And while I'm at it, I'm going to add some holes to other parts of the model just to help aid in cleaning the model out later on. And this will just help me to get out the resin that hasn't cured from the inside of the model later on when I put this into RPA. The next thing to do is to click on the supports and click onto utilities and raise the model five millimeters off the bed. This is gonna help me so that I can add supports underneath the bottom parts of the model. After looking at the model, I'm going to now look at other orientation possibilities just in case there may be a better way of me supporting this without doing too much damage. The next thing we're going to do once we've got the orientation correct on the model is we're going to click on the island detector and we're going to click search. I only have mine set to detail on the accuracy, but I feel like it gives me enough for me to work from. And most of the time, any more than that is probably not going to really pick up in the printer in the first place. I do like this method of looking for islands because it's easier for me to catch things that I may miss. For example, not thinking about areas but it does miss a couple. So you do have to be vigilant and making sure that you get all the islands that you need. Sometimes when you're recording a video, things don't go quite according to plan. So unfortunately, I appear to have lost all the rest of the footage of putting the supports on this model, but I'm gonna show you how the model looks in its final state before I printed it. And you can see how I placed the supports on this model. And then I'll talk you through very briefly on a different model, pretty much my thought process with how I was putting the supports on the other model. Hopefully this gives you enough information. Unfortunately, like I said, I accidentally deleted all the footage and this is all I have left. This next model is a model from 3D Wicked. It is Dr. Octopus's torso and I'm gonna go through pretty much the same process to start off with getting the correct orientation, making sure there is drainage holes. One thing you'll notice is that I'm using only medium supports. If you would like to see my support settings, I have them posted 
in the story section on my Instagram. They're there for you to always look at, so you've got a reference to go back and check them. If I update them, I will update them there too. My medium support is not strong enough to hold the model on its own. However, it's also not strong enough to leave too much of a mark on the model when you pull them off. And so this is the ideal situation for me to use more supports to spread the load over smaller supports, leaving less damage on the model, but also helping to ensure that there is less failures in my printing. One of the most important things for me is not to have a failure. I would rather do a bit of sanding or prep work onto a model than to have a failure because unfortunately failures cost money. And so I will go through the entire model and I'll use a lot of support. Some people will tell you that it's too many. However, all I'm saying is that whenever I support something myself, I usually have, I would say at least a 98 to 99% success rate. There is times when I miss stuff, of course I'm only human and then what I will do once all the supports are on I'll go through and auto parent them which will place all the supports that are close enough together into one support leg and then I'll also add auto bracings as well I will show you some images of how this model came out from the print with just the supports removed Hopefully that answered a couple of your questions. The whole point is at the end of the day, everybody should be able to do most of these things. And sometimes the information is a little bit sketchy online, particularly if you ask in any Facebook groups, because most people seem to know there is only one way of doing things and it's their way. And if you haven't leveled the bed, you've probably failed already, which is probably true. But most times they just tell you to level the bed. Sorry, Phil, I have no filament coming out of my printer. All right, Steve, have you leveled the freaking bed? Yes, Phil, I've leveled the bed, but there's no filament coming out my printer. Well, Steve, if you haven't leveled the bed, there probably will never be filament coming out your printer ever because the bed leveling is everything. All right, Steve, my feet really hurt every time I print. Is it because you haven't leveled your bed? Hey, Phil, <coughs> you, bro. Enough of that nonsense. Hopefully this video gave you some insight and answered a couple of your questions. If that didn't happen, then I don't even know what to do anymore. But wait, before you go, make sure to click subscribe, click like, comment in the bottom below, tell me what's your favorite way of doing things, or just tell me how much you hate lychee because we know you're going to do that as well. And while you're down there, look in the description, perhaps join the Patreon, access to private discord nothing else thank you for coming this has been my ted talk i'm gonna pop off now